We want our lives to matter. We yearn to believe that our life means something and that we're making a difference. We want to improve ourselves and the world in the short time we're on earth. Now, in our culture, we identify our worth and value oftentimes with what labor we perform. Many times when people first meet, the question is, what do you do? Which really means, what is your occupation? What is your job? Our identity and self-worth is defined by how we spend our time, or rather how we spend our, how we trade our time and energy for money. So what is labor? Well, an economist would say, labor is the amount of physical, mental, and social effort used to produce goods and services. It supplies the expertise, manpower, and service needed to turn raw materials into finished products and services. Now, while that's a technical definition of labor, actually, labor is the sacrifice of your time. Labor occurs when you trade your time and energy for a purpose. It's the sacrifice of your life when you choose to do something that you think is necessary. Labor is the sacrifice you make of your time. Finding the right labor, your correct occupation, your most rewarding way to spend your time. This has been a great addressed by many great religious insights. Dharma. Dharma is the concept of right behavior as determined by your destiny and your calling. In Buddhism, Dharma is the nature of reality regarded as a universal truth taught by Buddha. In Hinduism, Dharma is a cosmic law underlying right behavior and social order. See, in these religions, the goal of life is self-actualization, to become completely aware of, in touch, in, in touch with one's higher self, so that one can live as closely as possible in accordance with the eternal order of the universe. Self-actualization is only possible if you find and follow your right way of living, your dharma, how you labor, how you spend your life. Dharma means one's work in the world, a concept that includes one's duties, rights, obligations, laws, standards of conduct, and virtues. In short, your right way of living. It's a labor with love. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells a conflicted Arjuna, it's better to do your own dharma, even imperfectly, than someone else's dharma perfectly. Now at this point in the story, Arjuna is facing a great battle and doesn't want to fight. Krishna points out that going into battle, that's Arjuna's dharma. Arjuna is a warrior, so despite his reservations of going to battle with his kinfolks, his path lies in the battle. The Gita tells us that our dharmas are bigger than ourselves. So dharma is about how you spend your time. And even during COVID and the restrictions of sheltering in place, you are still choosing how you spend your time. Even if you're retired, you are still choosing how to use your life. Even if you've never worked for wages, you still must do your own dharma. So how do you know if you're following your dharma? The one test of finding dharma that I use is to evaluate how successful you are from separating your labor from the results. Will you continue with your labor even if the outcomes are not as you planned, or even when the outcomes are temporary or even unnoticed? I believe your dharma, your right way of living, 
will keep you continuously laboring because you know that deep down inside you're doing what is right and what is needed. If you are following your true calling, then it doesn't matter if your outcomes are temporary or fall short. You just keep working at it. You labor with love. Without finding their dharma, social justice workers would not exist. Everyone I know who's working on social justice knows that what they are doing is right and needed, but they also know that their outcomes cannot be measured because it often seems that nothing changes or changes too slowly. But if you keep laboring and according with your dharma, I believe you are making a difference by living a life in harmony with the universe, even if it doesn't show to the outside observer. Now, we routinely make what I call a Dharma mistake when we expect our efforts to last, when we evaluate our lives by what physical achievements we've helped manifest. Our life's value is not in the objects we've made or bought. We also make a Dharma mistake in thinking that our right labors will bring us peace. Songar Rinpoche says it this way, it is such a mistake to assume that practicing Dharma will help us calm down or lead an untroubled life. Nothing could be further from the truth. Dharma is not a therapy. Quite the opposite. In fact, Dharma is tailored to specifically turn your life upside down. It's what you've signed up for. Here's a story. Someone I used to work with and knew well, built a home, raised two boys there. Find, they, they put their whole lives into the home and the, the, the property, and then they decided they, need, they wanted to move. So they decided to sell their house and they spruced it up. You know the way you do. You, you spruce up your house before you sell it so that the next person can enjoy it. They spruced it up, painted, landscaped, everything else, found a great couple. And the couple bought the home and they had such big plans. And the, my friends were so proud that they had found someone who would really appreciate the home. And toward the end of the sale, they said, hey, can, can we take the one door jam where we marked off where our sons were growing up? And if you've got children, you may have done this, but you mark on the door frame the height of your child at a certain age. And that new owner said, sure, just take it. So they took the door frame and took it home and had it. Within two weeks, the new owners had completely demolished the home and started building a new one. If our life's worth is determined by the physical achievements, that's a Dharma mistake. But if by holding that door jam brings you joy of raising a family and memories of working together, then perhaps you can believe that your labor is never wasted and that your life is making a difference. And your efforts and your labors that give love and comfort to others, that's the right way of living. We want our lives to matter. We yearn to believe that our life means something and that we're making a difference. We want to improve ourselves and the world in this very short time when we're on earth. On this Labor Day weekend, during this most bizarre year ever, let us reflect on how we're spending our time and how we're using and spending our life for me, life's value is not about physical achievements. It's about the love and compassion and justice we create and share in this world. May you find the right labor for you and do it ceaselessly with love. Amen and blessed be. Hi. I'd like to talk about a labor of love.
Love is one of the most transformative emotions we have. If done well, it can transform communities and it can sustain healthy ecosystems. The labor of love requires patience, time, and commitment. The emotion of love creates equanimity, acceptance, and connection. The emotional labor of love is intense. Sometimes we feel in the clouds and sometimes we feel pushed to our limits. But it's worth doing, we know. This emotional labor is the most precious resource we have. Emotional labor is a kind of a catch-all term. In the 1983, it was developed by a sociologist named Arlie Hochschild. It was used to describe what employees have to go through when they deal with customers. In other words, the customer is always right, even if they are extremely upset and are blaming you for something that really isn't your fault. The suppression of the emotions is a watch is what happens when we engage in emotional labor. We suppress the, the pain, the hurt, the sense of disenfranchisement. Sometimes we can feel when people are treating us in what we think is a not a good way. It's really important, as you use to remember our second principle when these things happen. The second principle states that justice, equity, and compassion in human relations is very, very necessary in order to create the sixth principle, which is global peace, justice, and sustainability. Emotional labor is the backbone under which all of our communities operate. And so we have to ask ourselves, do we want a healthy ecosystem or do we want to feel uncomfortable and not say anything about it, to encourage the discomfort to continue? In a way, this type of emotional labor is conducive of staying silent and complicit. So what do we do about it? We name our emotions and we recognize when we need to stand up for what we believe in. The thing is, is we have to come that, to that place from a place of hope. We have to have an example of a successful labor of love. And it's so hard to find those things now, especially with the pandemic, with the fire, with our government, with the state of our world. Well, let me show you just one thing that's in front of you every day. And you probably not thought of it as a labor of love. But let me show you something. That's an acorn. They're dispersed by the thousands every season. Given out freely, there's a certain amount of hope in this biology that this tiny power packed nut will turn into this. So next time you feel the need or the anxiousness to comment on something that's making you uncomfortable, be aware of what it really is making you uncomfortable. What is really bothering you? And take a breath. One of the side effects of 
Emotional suppression can be lashing out and blaming. And then we're involved in creating emotional labor for others. Why not take from the Oaks example? Feed your neighbors with thousands of acorns, all the squirrels come. Shelter your neighbors with hospitality. They provide shade. Let your leaves mulch the soil so that other plants can grow, so that other animals can come and live, so that the birds can shelter in your limbs. Give without expectation. Be part of the environment. Stand tall and reach to the sky. You use our mighty oaks. They can have justice, equity, and compassion in their human relations. Remember the lesson of the oak. That's today's nugget of wisdom. And labor well in love because it's so worth it. Our ecosystem, our world depends on it. Ashe.